What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today I'm going to be addressing some common mistakes that players make when power leveling crafted and deep sight weapons in Destiny 2. Once crafting a weapon at the Enclave, you'll need to level it up before having access to all of its sweet enhanced traits. This is done by completing activities and getting kills with your crafted weapon. Most Guardians would agree that since weapon crafting was introduced, the Shuro Chi encounter of the Last Wish Raid has been the most optimal location to farm for deep sight and crafted weapon XP, even if it does get a little boring after a while. Yes, there is the opening encounter to the Grasp of Avarice, and the Golgoroth encounter of Kingsfall. And while both of these are solid methods to farm, neither of these are as efficient as the Shuro Chi method, since both require a lot of running around to either find enemies or bank moats, whereas the Shuro Chi encounter funnels the enemies straight to you in a more confined space. And once you've obtained the checkpoint for Shuro Chi, either through the Wish Wall or a shared checkpoint, you'll be able to come back as often as you need to, up until weekly reset. When farming weapon XP through Shirochi, there are a few key details that you need to keep in mind to improve your efficiency. First off, never farm with a Titan or a Warlock. You'll just be wasting your time. While you might be a Warlock or Titan main, Hunters are the class that reign supreme when it comes to weapon XP farming. For one simple reason, Shadow Shot Deadfall. This creates a Void Anchor when casting your Tether that pulls targets in and spreads any received damage to all who are tethered, giving you easy credit it towards that crafted weapon and saving you a ton of ammo in the process which will be especially important when trying to level up those heavy weapons. One big mistake that many guardians make when farming Shirochi with tether is the use of echo of expulsion. This fragment will cause your enemies to explode on death after being tethered which will cause those deaths to be counted as super kills and not weapon kills. So before you start farming take Echo of Expulsion off. Which brings me to the third key detail to keep in mind when farming. Do not fire your tether at the doorway when the encounter starts. This is pretty much going to chalk up to a wasted effort and a wasted super, as you'll only be tethering the small group of adds that spawn in at the start. So instead, push all the way in through the doors and head up to the steps and drop your tether there. This will allow your tether to catch all the thrall that follow you up the steps, as well as all the enemies that spawn in when Shuro Chi spawns onto her plate. The next key detail to farming XP is your loadout. Far too often I see players with the most mismatched loadouts that you can imagine, trying to farm for weapon XP, and it's just not efficient. You need an actual farming loadout, which I will leave a link in the description below for an excellent hunter build specifically designed for Shuro Chi XP farming. This build is comprised of elemental light, which creates a void well when defeating an enemy with your super, and font of wisdom, which provides you with a significant boost in intellect for 30 seconds after picking up a well, allowing you to get your super back much more quickly. Well of Utility will also be a great mod choice here, as you'll create a void well when defeating an enemy with a weapon after using your class ability. Since getting tetherback is the main goal with this build, you'll need to focus your armor stats as much towards intellect as you can to reduce the overall cooldown of your super. Stacking ammo reserves, scavenger, and finder mods on your helmet, chest, and boots will be the best way to regain special and heavy ammo without having to drop a ton of raid banners in the process. For those who had grown accustomed to using the Last Wish raid mod Taken Armaments, which provides heavy ammo after grenade kills, well, this mod no longer works. In fact, none of the Last Wish raid mods work any longer, so this is no longer an option. We're also using the only acceptable exotic with this farm, the Orpheus Rig, which provide melee, grenade, and super energy for each tethered enemy, and can provide up to 50% of your super energy back. This will also provide you with Mobius 
quiver, giving you an additional tether shot. With the combination of Orpheus rigs and the other aspects, mods, and fragments with this build, you'll see yourself getting at least two separate tethers off during each run through, which considering it takes less than two minutes to run through Shurichi, offering you close to a hundred enemies each time, you'll have those crafted weapons leveled up in no time. And now that you know what not to do when farming weapon XP, grab yourself a Red Bull, tune in to your favorite Spotify channel, and hit up the Last Wish Raid for the most efficient weapon XP farm in Destiny 2. That's going to wrap things up for today's video, but if you've got any additional tips and suggestions to help out your fellow Guardians, then be sure to leave those in the comments below, and let me know what you're looking forward to most out of Lightfall. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then please be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated, and both really do help support the channel. If you're in need of help throughout this season, with maybe a nightfall, a dungeon, a raid, or anything else, then be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below, and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.